This week on Uncensored, we have with us Public Administration Minister John Sinimaratna. Thank you for being with us, Minister. Welcome to Uncensored. Some allege that uh, you sheltered the suspects of uh, the Kahawat Raman murder case, and it has been revealed that uh, one of the suspects has very close connection with you. What is your reply to that? Here, there seems to be some baseless allegation or belief at the outset that uh, I uh, not shielded really by interfering in the investigation of the police in regard to this uh, double murder that has taken place in Kahawat. So I deny it vehemently because I had nothing to do with this uh, and I am not the type who interfere in investigation into criminal activities. Uh, in fact, I uh, contacted the responsible police officers who were in charge of this investigation and particularly the senior superintendent of police of Ratnapur and, uh, and also the OIC of Kamath and uh, asked them to uh, expedite the investigation and there is whoever against whom that there is evidence. So that has been my attitude right to work. And uh, only reason as why the people think that I interfere in this investigation is that a brother of the suspect was employed by me as one of the coordinated secretaries. I have five coordinated secretaries and he was one of them. And he has been working in my staff for the last about uh, 10 to 12 years and I know him for about more than 15 years as a political lawyerist. So maybe that that he worked under me prompted me to interfere this and I say that I never uttered the word to the investigating officers to in order to influence or in order to uh, obstruct the investigations. So uh, this person is Dharma Seri, your contact secretary. He is, his name is Dharma Seri. Yeah. Before making Dharma Seri suspect brother, a member of a personal staff, why didn't you find out about his uh, background or do you randomly hire people like that? Normally we don't find the you know background of people who are taken into a personal staff. But the first criteria is our you know the political loyalty and uh, the the efficiency. So those are the matters that are normally considered by the ministers of education whenever the person is recruited to the person is staff. And then uh, I should say further, it is impossible to it is impossible to uh, uh, penetrate into the the penetrate into the backyard or the what you call it. The, 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 uh, how should I say, penetrate into the uh, background of the members, the other members of his family. It's not possible because when a person is employed, his family may be elsewhere. Now, this man's family is about five kilometers away, and I don't meet them often. And uh, to tell you frankly, I have no connection whatsoever with the, the, this brother or the other, with some of the other brothers. I know two of his other brothers, two or three of his other brothers. Other than that, the rest are not known to me. So, you haven't even seen this man? The person no, I haven't the seen him in the sense I may have seen him, but you know, I have never had any dealing or uh, what you call recognition of him as a brother of the I, uh, of course, know another younger brother who was appointed to the health ministry and all that. And uh, that's all. No connection, no, no, no acquaintance whatsoever. So, as soon as Dharmasiri's involvement was revealed, he was expelled from your. Uh, yeah, as soon as I had, you know, evidence to say that, you know, a member of his family had something to do with this murder, I terminated his services. There was a speculation earlier. But, you know, I in fact questioned Dharmasiri, what is the meaning of this story? 
He denied the MLB. So I waited till some evidence emerged. As regard to the connection of these people to this murder. The moment the evidence emerged, I came to know from the police that you know he's his brother is going to be arrested. Then I called him and then I told him, you must leave the job and go. When did Dharmasini last speak to you or interact with you? He spoke to me, I can't remember the date, but you know, very seldom. Very seldom. You know, normally, when I go to, go to my village for the weekend, only I meet him. And uh, when I go for the weekend, then I go to various places in the district for the various public function. So he works in the office. So normally, if there's any official requirement, normally I talk to him, or political requirement. You said you spoke to senior police officials in the area, but it is widely rumored that the police investigations into these killings were hindered to a large extent due to political influence. So how did it happen? Yes, 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 yes. The political leader of opposition party has said publicly that there is political influence. Again, the carrying out of these investigations. That is an unwanted, unfounded statement. And it is on the following day that the people go over the road. Go over the road. And then uh, express their education. That is because uh, fairly a long time last before this man was arrested after incident. We had a long time ago, I think about an hour, months. But the period last. So I think uh, this is, uh, so people also became rather impatient. Even earlier such a thing happened because there was a series of murders of all women. People go to the road, there yeah, I went to the people and I calmed them down saying that the way we have done will be arrested soon. On this occasion also, people were becoming agitated. So that uh, police, I think, uh, had to take some steps on the basis of the evidence. And uh, of course, uh, we have to consider this also because police also every time I ask, they say there's no evidence, there's no evidence. Nobody was coming out with any information about the matter. Nobody was coming out with any information. No evidence. And uh, police, to their own efforts, you see, it, you know, exercising some scientific uh, technology, perhaps, and uh, circumstantial, circumstantial evidence. Only that they went away. If the investigations were not hindered, why did the villagers uh, to blow into their hands and set fire on houses? Uh, why did they protest against the police? Did they set that fire because on houses? Of the because of the inside. Because of the incitement and also delay in arresting the suspect. Did you contact the IGP after the incident? Uh, I spoke to ID. I spoke to ID mainly because of the agitations and rumors that were afloat in the area. Saying that I am interfering with this incident. So I said I am not interfering, I am not hindering. Please continue these investigations and try to arrest whoever who is responsible. I always, I very often spoke to the police chief in the area, that is senior superintendent of police, and said the same thing. In a press conference you said uh, some media institutions are attempting to tarnish your image by publishing false news against you. Why are they trying to tarnish your image and uh, what do they gain by that? The, the, yeah, that's of course one of the papers or other three papers, not whole media, not all media, section of the media, I say, had published certain articles which were extremely derogatory of me. 
these articles have been published without any valid basis. Or any substantive, substantive proof. Most of these most of these uh, allegations that had been made against me were based on mere rumours. And the extent to which that the journalists had, you know, the journalists had uh, lowered themselves for the journalists had uh, come down. Degenerated. The journalists have degenerated. It's very sad. It's very sad. They are supposed to be writing to some of the national papers. Like the way you know, TV there. And uh, nothing. So I got the information that this can't be the, the motive of the journalist. Because this is completely violating the, the principles of journalism without checking up what it is. Without even contacting me, whether these rumors or whatever, whatever they hear are true, nothing, nobody verified from me. So they have just let it go in the papers. So they were very unfair by me, and I thought that there are some forces who are behind this journalists who are waiting to gain political mileage by tarnishing my political charisma, my political image, which I have built over a period of 40 years. So you are a lawyer by profession, so why don't you take legal actions against you? Yeah, that is something I am considering. You but legal action, I should say, legal action is rather because by the time the, the relief is obtained by civil litigation, you see the damage is done. It will take at least three, four years for me to get relief. If I complain to the press council, I know they might ask them to correct it and the correction will be inserted in a inner page, in a significant way, insignificant place. That is the outcome of it. I know a very sad situation. Because criminal action that could have been filed is completely out now because that law has been abolished. I think that is why these journalists, irresponsible journalists, are behaving like this. Do you think your political rivals are behind these allegations? These yeah, allegations? I say that I can't name anybody. I can't name anybody. Some political forces are here. The elements belong to the government or to the opposition? The opposition uh, could be uh, in our own camp, there yeah, maybe because from the way that these, uh, uh, from the way that various rumours are spread and where the remarks are made in public places, in, the, in town, in publicly, and judging from the people who do it. There are some people who are aligned to various political personalities, even in our camp. So maybe that there may be a common interest as far as they are concerned. Do you believe that your popularity has been eroded uh, as a result of these allegations against you? No, I don't think. Because now I think aftermath is very, very, very evident. Now people all over the district have put up banners and those in my political career and appreciating my political performance and saying that they still stand by me and they, do, they say that we still believe at least the people who support me, large number, so that uh, I don't think they can, I feel that uh, the, my performance for the last 40 years has been very outstanding. I say that I am the politician in the district who has done the biggest service to the district. 
maybe of infrastructure, by way of health facilities, by building and reorganizing uh, hospitals, schools, then uh, electricity. When I became the minister, it was only 52% of the population who consumed electricity. I mean, I have gone up to 95, so 95%. And I have given jobs to a large number of youths in the district. An unprecedented number. So this service, I don't think, can be beaten by anybody. So that people like you still appreciate it. And also, judging from my conduct, judging from my mentality and qualities, I will be the who refuse to believe these allegations. And the people who voted me will refuse to believe these allegations. Last election, I got the highest in Ratha Kura, 125,000 votes, and came first in the district. The first time I made any efforts to get the highest, because all this time, although I contest the election, I won. I won all the elections that I contested from 89. And although I won these elections, that is by confining my election campaign to certain given areas, certain given areas. Because I did not campaign all of the district. But this time I expanded my the, the area of operation and was able to master the highest. Master the highest in Dhatta. Has Kahavatta become a safe haven for drug traffickers and drug addicts? I don't have any information. In fact, I checked up after this incident. Earlier there was no need. After this incident, because it surprised me really. It surprised me. I can't say, I don't deny that these people may have something to be done because one of their members in Karamu is said to have possessed some quantity of drugs. But as far as Kamat is concerned, I checked up from various people whom I know. But I was informed that there is no information of drugs being used by anybody in Kama. Don't know anybody has been privately using, privately dealing, that I can't be now. But to my knowledge, nobody has told, nobody has informed me of that. What do the police say about that? The police or nobody, I, normally when I discuss with one of the officers, they also said that you know, generally they don't. They haven't come across any such cases. Prior to this double murder, there was a series of mysterious killings in the Kahawat area. Do you think these killings have some sort of a connection with the drug traffickers and the, the drug addicts in the area? I can't say. I can't say without going into this matter scientifically and deeply. Because uh, Certain villages have been taken into custody by the police in respect of those murders that took place. So I think it is up to the police to find out whether these people who are suspected of this murder are drugs traffickers or drug, drug users, addicts. Yeah, what was the reason behind all those uh, mysterious killings? I, mean, I know it's up to that the police. That really baffles us. That really, this is a matter that we discuss over and over again in the area. In fact, you know, whenever I meet the district development committee, I always take this matter for discussion. And uh, I have summoned a special meeting, including the highest police officers of the district. And uh, I have administrative officers of the district to discuss this matter. But nobody has been able to give me a reason as to why these killings are happening. Because the majority of these people who were killed during this period, during this period, are some uh, matured women, ladies. In 2001, there were a series of murders. There's a political murders. There's also around what is common. We think and go to together like that. So this is very surprising that this type of things are happening in an area because uh, Kamata had not been a bad area. That this series of murders really took place, started to take place in 2005. Number of murders. 
Then, uh, for some time, there was a lull period as far as this murders are concerned. Then, from about 2007 again, they started. After about five years, or six years, of the first wave of murders. So, this is something that should be clearly investigated by the criminologists, police, politicians, and everybody, and take some remedial measures.